Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing how to DIY this hand-painted sign. It's a great gift for newlyweds or perfect for anyone in your family and I totally love the rustic vibes. And by the way, this is for people who kind of already have a little bit of experience lettering and if you need some tutorials, I do have those available on my channel. Let's get into our materials. You're gonna need a wood slab. Mine is about 12 inches wide. You could totally scale it down to size though. You're also gonna need a drill and a five eighths inch drill bit as well as some rope to fit inside those holes that you drill and scissors to cut it you're also going to need a ruler and a pencil and you absolutely need an eraser you're gonna need two different paint brushes one that is nice and wide and square and then one that is a round brush this is a number six and both of those need to be synthetic they're a little bit sturdier and easier to work with and then these are the two paints that I like for this project, the exact brand and everything, that's what I recommend. The first step is to decide where the top of your wood slice is gonna be. I just recommend doing whatever's gonna be easiest on you because things can be a little bit harder to center because it's just a little bit more of an organic shape, you know what I'm saying? So pick what's gonna be easiest for you to work with as a letterer. And then we're gonna go ahead and mark some holes for our drill spots. You want them to be pretty far apart and an even spacing from the top and the side of the wood round. Just do the best that you can. And then of course getting those as level as possible. Go ahead and drill those as well. I did it off camera because I didn't wanna do anything that would harm anyone. If you are a child, please get an adult's help when you drill. Then you're just gonna cut in the edges. That's super simple. You just wanna go nice and slow. This actually took me 22 minutes to cut the entire thing in. Um, just go nice and slow so you get the best edge that you can because it's almost impossible to tape that edge. And then just go ahead and fill everything in. And what you want to do is make sure the entire time that you're smoothing everything out so that you're not creating any extra ridges on the surface that might mess up your lettering. But that particular black paint actually smooths out the edges really well. Next you want to set up some guides and you're going to work your guides to the holes that you drilled instead of the wood slab because the holes are going to set up like whether or not your painting is straight, not your wood slab. That'll make sense once we get the rope in and it's hanging and everything. So we're gonna do a guideline at the top, a guideline at the bottom, and then one right through the center. So just um, measure the length of your holes, between your holes, and then put one right in the center. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you guys the sketching portion. So for me, this is the most important part, you guys, because this is when we have an eraser. This is the easiest time for us to er erase, and this is the best time to make our work look professional. So as you can see, I, I'm gonna talk you guys through the sketch. I'm not gonna show you all of it because we would, we would be here all day, but I'm gonna tell you a couple of reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. So first of all, I started with the E because it's the center letter and that's gonna help me center my piece overall. And then as you can see, I just erased the Y. That's because the Y didn't have the proper slant of the overall piece. It had a different slant than the rest of the letters that were on my piece so far. So I needed to erase it and get a better slant on that letter. And then previously I erased, erased this V as well because it missed the baseline and I needed to hit the baseline because the Y and the capital E were already going to descend below the baseline. Um, so I wanted to keep the other letters more uniform. And then for this style, I really wanted all the letters to be super tucked really closely together. Um, not a lot of spacing between the lines. So that is why I kind of did allow myself to move around on the baseline just a little bit, but overall using my ruler to make things, make sure things are nice and straight. Another thing you wanna do while you're sketching is make sure your letters are proportional. You don't want some to be big and some to be small. So try to be really consistent. And then just continue your sketch following some of those practices and erase as often as you need to. So we're gonna start painting and what you need to do is mix a little bit of water into your acrylic paint. You need to thin your paint down some so that it isn't as ridged as, just like we talked about before. And by the way, right now I'm showing you a real time speed. This is actually how slow I move when I'm painting this, but I will speed it up in a little bit. So like I was saying about the paint, we wanna add a little bit of water in so that it is 
more flat and it spreads out better and we can, it's a little bit more malleable on our paintbrush. It's gonna help us move around and glide with the paint more easily, but we don't want it too wet because if it's too wet, the wood will just like soak it up and make it spread out and it'll be sloppy. You know what I'm saying? So um, you have to find a really good mix of paint, but once you get it going and once you have that style going, you'll know exactly what that is. The second tip for actually painting this is we're not gonna use those brush lettering techniques that you normally use. Because the surface is rough, it causes too many mistakes to happen. It gets a little too crazy. So if we use a faux calligraphy technique, which is just thickening up the downstrokes, then we get a little bit more crisp work and it's gonna look a lot more professional. Also, when we apply pressure, it really increases the chances that the paint is gonna spread out and we're gonna to have to correct more mistakes. So I found that while I could occasionally add pressure to create a little thickness and help myself out, that it was best to kinda of just do the faux calligraphy technique. If you're not aware, faux calligraphy is just thickening up downstrokes and what you wanna do is try to make sure that your downstrokes are all very consistent. Really, you wanna make sure all your strokes are consistent so that your, your thin lines are as thin as you can get them and and they're all very a consistent width, and the same for your thick lines. You want them to be a very consistent width. That makes the piece look more uniform and cohesive. Another tip that I have is to have that paper towel at the bottom and some other paper towels nearby because that can help you fix any mistakes. If there's any bleeds or anything like that, you can quickly absorb any excess water or excess paint with the paper towels. You're actually about to see a, an example of that in just a minute here. I did leave my mistakes in so that you could see me correct my mistakes as well. I thought that would be helpful. And using a paper towel at the bottom helps me to not get pencil lead everywhere and help my sketch stay intact as I paint across the entire thing. Um, otherwise, it would be getting all over my hand and getting all over the surface of my painting. Another tip I have for when you're doing the painting portion of this is to do what makes your hand comfortable. Sometimes you're gonna get into a spot, particularly for me when it's go it's going around corners, like the, the top of the M when I'm rounding the top of something. I have a little bit of trouble getting the paintbrush to work with me, so you might need to come at it from the other side. I'm correcting some of my mistakes here, so that eye really got out of hand for me, as you can tell here. So I just rinsed my brush off really well, got all the white out and dried it off and added a little bit of black to my tip and then just started fixing my letters. And by the way, I do this really, really slow as well because if I keep making mistakes and then I have to pile black on white on black on white, not only is it gonna get more complicated for me, but I don't want there to be a paint buildup anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So just go in with black really carefully and shape up your letters anywhere you need to or if you've had any bleeding, just go over those spots. And um, again, going very slow. A lot of times on the internet, calligraphers are gonna speed up their work. Because we work so slowly, we want you to see the whole process. But yes, I am working very slowly, so always keep that in mind. And then the last step is once everything dries, go ahead and erase all of your guidelines. And then we just have to add our rope. This is super simple. I like to go ahead and cut my scissors. I mean, I cut my rope at an angle because it helps me to get it through the hole because it's a pretty tight fit, but I want it to be a tight fit. And then just tie a knot. That's super simple. If you know some cool knots or something that would be pretty, go for it. I just know this pretty basic knot, so that's the one I'm going with, but you can do whatever you want. If you have more skills than me, I am totally about that. So that is the piece, guys. Once you trim off these little edges, you are good to go. I think it's an awesome gift and I totally love this. So I hope you guys do as well. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content and give this video a thumbs up and share it with your calligraphy friends. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time and have a good one. Bye.